Hello friends, today's video is all about the importance of combining listening to your body with purposefully, proactively and mechanically doing the opposite of what your eating disorder suggests or wants. In recovery, we often talk about the importance of listening to your body and there's no doubt about it, that is literally central to this whole process. Learning to listen to what your core self and what your body is wanting and needing and to honour that through the actions that you choose to take. That is a huge part of recovery. But something that is also incredibly important is purposefully, proactively, forcefully and sometimes mechanically doing the opposite of what your eating disorder suggests or wants you to do. And the truth is, Sometimes those two things combine. When the thing that deep down you know you want to do or the thing that your body is asking for is also the opposite of what your eating disorder is suggesting, that's when those two things come together. However, there are also times in recovery where doing the opposite of what your eating disorder wants doesn't feel like what you want to do or what your body wants in any given moment. And I think that's something I certainly had to recognise in my own recovery journey and something that I talk to clients a lot about is this importance of combining the two things together. And yes, sometimes those two things, they do meet in the middle. What you want, what your body is asking for is the same as the opposite of what your eating disorder suggests. But there are also lots and lots of times and situations where you may have to force yourself to do things that you don't want to do. Things that you feel like you don't really fancy, things that you think, I don't want that in this moment, or I don't like the idea of saying yes to that. Whatever version of it is, there are lots of situations where you may have to say yes to things, or you may have to make yourself do things or have things that you may not feel like you want, but actually they have to happen because they are the opposite of what the eating disorder is wanting to have happen or to do. And I think this is something that's very important to hold on to in recovery, because often, and I know I definitely did this, you can think of recovery as this thing where in every moment, you know, with certainty, you're going to be carving towards the person you want to be in the life that you want to be living. And that even if it feels really hard, there's going to be this deep sense of I'm getting closer to the person I want to be in the life that I want to live. However, actually, the reality is, yes, that can happen. But there's also lots of times where taking the right recovery step, you know, making the right recovery choice can feel like it's in conflict with the person that you are. And you're not sure if that's part of the life you want to live. And you don't really know what that life is or who you are. And it's all very confusing. And all you know is that the eating sort of just doesn't want that to happen. And I think this is where it's very important to remember that that alone is a reason to do it. Regardless of how you feel going into something, whether you're excited for it or dreading it, whether you want to do it or you don't want to do it, whether you're fancying that thing or not, there are all sorts of times and situations in recovery where you have to do the thing simply because your eating disorder doesn't want it to happen. And there's also lots of times where if you were to wait to want to do things, you would be waiting the rest of your life. If you were to wait to crave that thing that actually your eating disorder has had on its disapprove list for goodness knows how long, if you were to wait to want to say yes to that spontaneous opportunity that's come up or that spontaneous movie night with your friends with a pizza takeaway or that meal out with someone, actually you could be waiting a very, very long time. And also the times where you might feel like you want to say yes may be so few and far between that you're not actually able to create the intensity that's necessary to neurally rewire. And this is why, yes, recovery is about you listening to your body. It is about you tuning into your core self and listening to that you. But it is also about doing the opposite of what the eating disorder wants. And sometimes that feels great, and sometimes that feels rubbish. Sometimes it feels like it's completely aligned with the thing that you know you want to do. And sometimes it feels like it's in total opposition to what you'd actually like to do in that moment. And it's crucial to remember this because, as I said, if you were to wait for the time when you want to do some of these things, 
you could be waiting forever. Whereas if you push yourself and you force yourself and you take that action purely because you recognise that there is fear and resistance to doing so, actually, whatever happens, you will unlock freedom and you will do work to recover, to neurally rewire, to nutritionally rehabilitate. But you may also unlock and reconnect with your core self. And so by doing the opposite of the eating disorder, you're better able to be tuned in to what your core self wants. I remember this happening time and time again with things that had been very much put on my eating disorders disapproved list, where I didn't spontaneously want to challenge them. I didn't really fancy them. It wasn't really something I was interested in, but I knew there was resistance there. And so I just made myself, and for quite a number of times doing that, because repetition is absolutely crucial, quite a number of times I'd think, oh, I don't like this very much. I'm not sure. Why. But actually with that repetition and with that dismantling of the eating disorder resistance, I was able to connect with myself again. Oh, hello, Roka. You come for ducky. I was able to connect with myself again and through that reconnect with the things that actually I did like and rediscover the things that maybe eating disorder had put on a no list for so long that I'd actually completely forgotten about liking. And only by dismantling that fear and resistance, by pushing my way through it, was I able to touch base again with that core self, with that genuine and authentic me and discover and rediscover the things that I did like. So to summarise, recovery is a combination of listening to your body, honouring what it's asking for, taking action based on its needs and its requests, and purposefully, proactively, forcefully, and occasionally, or fairly often, mechanically, doing the opposite of what the eating disorder wants or suggests. And what this means is that, yes, there will be times, of course, where what you authentically want to do is also the opposite action to your eating disorder. And those two things feel really aligned and powerful. But there will also be lots and lots of times where the opposite action to what your eating disorder wants or suggests is not what you want to do right in this moment. And actually, those are the times where you have to recognise the bigger picture, recognise that recovery is about pushing into fear. It's about doing what is hard. It's about going to those places where there is resistance. And sometimes that feels really empowering and great. And sometimes it feels rubbish. And that can bring about a lot of internal conflict. But the truth of it is, is that the you who is committed to recovery you who is committed to getting to a place where you are free of your eating disorder has to choose to do the opposite of what the eating disorder is suggesting and that no matter how hard that may feel in the now the future you who is recovered who is free is so incredibly grateful to the you today and proud of the you today who chooses to do the opposite, regardless of whether that feels like what you want to do or whether it feels in conflict with what you want to do right in that moment. So I hope that this has been helpful. As I often say, this is not just a listening space, a talking space, a thinking space. This is a doing space. So I really encourage you to gather this up and to carry this reminder with you as you move forwards today in your recovery and to remember that yes recovery is all about listening to your body but it is also about purposefully proactively forcefully and mechanically doing the opposite of what your eating disorder wants you to do or suggests so until the next time have a wonderful day wherever you are and i'll speak to you very soon bye